Hello and welcome to my video about simplifying single radicals. Now all of the radicals today will have an index of 2. I'll get to more about that terminology in just a second. Simply put, a radical is the inverse operation to an exponent. So when you see this symbol, it means square root. So the square root of something like a squared would simply be the value a. Now this is making the assumption that a is a positive value to begin with. I just want to put that out there to some advanced uh, classes that might would matter for my math one and my math two. We're going to usually assume that it's positive, um, but that is something I need to establish. I'm going to assume all variables are positive in today's uh, lesson, even though we're not going to be seeing them except for right now. Okay, and uh, now I need to clarify some terms I'm using today. So anytime you have a radical uh, symbol, you could have a few different things. Okay, um, so basically I'm going to outline what these uh, values are. Uh, usually these will be numbers. Um, so for the value a, um, for what I just wrote down, would be known as the coefficient. Just like the coefficient for a uh, term, uh, a monomial or something like that, it's multiplying everything that's going on over here. Okay, n is what's known as the index of the radical. Uh, it tells you the power of the radical. You'll notice that this one had no index written. That's because it's a square root. So it's, a, it, it's implied that it's a second root when there's nothing written there. Also, there was no coefficient written on this one, so it's like it's a 1 times that square root. Next up is b. b is our uh, base w inside the radical. This is always called a radicand, what you are taking the square root of. Technically, it would be b to the m is the radicand. Now, if ever you see m, you should already know that something like that is known as an exponent. All right, those are the terms I'm going to be using in the lesson. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. All right, so our first example is the square root of 100. Now, this is probably pretty simple for most of you, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it anyways. Um, there is an in-between step that I'm usually not going to show, but that would be rewriting as the, the, the square root of 100 as the square root of 10 squared to know that the square root and the square are, in fact, canceling and that this would equal 10. All right, this is what's called a rational answer because it is something I was able to take the square root of. Um, now, when that's the case, you could have done it in the calculator. Um, in the Desmos calculator, the square root symbol is located right here beside pi, so square root of 100, and it will tell you that the answer is 10. Again, that's only for rational answers that that will work. Now we're looking at something like the square root of 8. Unlike the square root of 100, the square root of 8 when I try to use the calculator, it gives me a decimal answer, and that just doesn't seem quite right. That is actually what's referred to as irrational. I'm just going to make a quick note about that. We are still simplifying, by the way. So whenever I'm looking at the square root of 8, I've got to think of numbers that I can take the square root of. So I'm going to make a list of those out to the side right now. Numbers I can take the square root of are perfect squares. So 1 squared would be 1. I'm not going to bother writing that one. 2 squared would be 4, 3 squared would be 9, 4 squared would be 16, 5 squared would be 25. Each of these I could take the square root of rationally. Now this list is going to help me in doing the upcoming problems. So if you want to write it on your paper, this is what I'm going to constantly be referring to as I do these problems. 7 squared would be 49, uh, 8 squared would be 64, and 9 squared would be 81. You can go as far as you want to. Usually I stop at about 144 for 12 squared. Um, so you can see I got 10 squared is 100, 121 is 11 squared, 144 is 12 squared. Now I'm going to stop right there, but the list does continue to go on. All right, now the reason why that list helps me, I'm not able to square root 8 because it's not on this list. However, a value on this list can divide out of the square root of 8, and that is the square root of 4. 4 goes into 8 two times. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 8 as the square root of 4 times 2, because 4 times 2 is 8. 
Now my last step is to square root what I can. So the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to have 2 as the coefficient times the root of 2. This 2 was not able to come out of the radicon, um, so it stays put. And that's it. All right, so we have another irrational problem. That's going to be my main focus is when the calculator just doesn't work. Because when I try to do the square root of 45, um, again, I'm getting a non-terminating decimal with no pattern to it. So it's unlikely to simplify rationally. This is another irrational one. So I'm going to reference my list. I'm going to find the largest perfect square that divides into 45. Now, that's actually going to be 9. 9 is actually the only one that divides into 45. So 45 is going to change into 9 times, let's see here, 9 times 5 is 45. None of the rest of these square roots will actually divide into 45. All right, now all I've got to do is take the square to 9, which ends up being 3, as I see right here. So 3 is my coefficient on the outside times the root of 5 is my radicand. There we have it. Now just really quick advice, um, if you are using a calculator and you've already typed in the original problem, what you should be able to do is you should be able to type in what you're getting as an answer, so 3 root 5, and you should see the exact same value in your calculator. Now that's really helpful, particularly if you're doing something like multiple choice and you're stuck on a problem, you can type in what the problem says and type in the answers until you see which one matches. That's really helpful advice for you. All right, so I'm going to do square root of 48. Now, I already know that this is irrational, but I'm going to go ahead and type it in just to confirm that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually reference that list of perfect squares again. Now, the trick is, is 4 divides into 48. That would actually not be the easiest way to do this problem because there's actually more values that will divide into 48. Um, and as I work my way down the list, 16 also divides into 48. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use the 16 since it's the larger value. Always go with the biggest value if there's more than one option as to what divides into it. So 16 multiplies with 3 to be 48 is what I've noticed. And now I'm going to square root the 16 to be 4 and the root 3 will remain inside. Now while I'm at it and I've got the calculator handy, I'm going to go into a second box and type in 4 root 3 and see that the values match as I was hoping that they would. This is my simplified answer. All right, this one, next one's a bit tricky. Um, so if you're working with the square root of 15 and you're wanting to check out if it's rational, it is not, it is irrational. Um, now next thing I'll do is look for one of my perfect squares that divide into 15. 4 does not divide into 15, 9 does not divide into 15, 16 obviously doesn't. None of these perfect squares divide into 15. So as odd as it might seem, the square root of 15 is equal to the square root of 15 is your simplified answer. You can't do anything on that one. Okay, now this is actually ends up being a rational answer. You wouldn't know that immediately, but this is actually called a coefficient. The 3 is what I'm referring to when I say coefficient. So this would read 3 times the square root of 100. Uh, the square root because the index is still a 2 since nothing's written. Anyways, we already saw what the square root of 100 is. So the square root of 100 is 10, um, and that's rational. And 3 times 10 would be 30. Notice how anything that comes out of the root multiplies the coefficient that was already there. That's what it will always do. All right, this is going to be our last example. We again have a coefficient. This one's negative 4, so it's going to multiply the root of 18. Now, since it's multiplying, I'm going to go ahead and figure out how the root of 18 can simplify. Now, root of 18 is not something that's rational like the previous one was. So when I try to square root of 18, I get an irrational answer. Let's find our perfect square that will divide into 18. The perfect square that will divide into 18 is 9. So 9 times 2 is 18. Now what I'll do is I'll square root the 9. When I do that, it will come out and multiply the negative 4. So this will read negative 4 times the square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 2 is your radicand. Again, the 9 came out as a 3. Negative 4 times 3 is then negative 12. So your final answer is negative 12 root 2. 
These can be checked as well with the calculator. So if you're struggling with them on multiple choice, please remember this. So if I type in the original problem, negative 4 times the root of 18, and I type into another box and I see negative 16.97, and I type in my answer, negative 12 times the square root of 2, negative 16.97. I know that I've actually done this problem correctly. All right, uh, if there's questions, please let me know through email. Thank you all very much.